Hello and welcome to part four of a set of four videos about geometric series produced for the Yukon Q Center. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of a geometric series that diverges, as well as an example of a geometric series that converges, and then finally show you how to find the infinite sum of that convergent series. As I explained in detail in part three, you could tell if an infinite geometric series converges or diverges by looking at its R value. If the value of R the common ratio, has an absolute value that is between 0 and 1, then the series converges, and you could calculate its infinite sum using this simple formula. If the absolute value of your R value is greater than or equal to 1, then the series diverges. Let's apply this information here to answer this question. Does this given series converge or diverge? I could tell that my R value is 4. And of course, the absolute value of 4 is just 4. 4 is obviously greater than 1, so this series diverges. There's no other work that we have to do for this problem. Now let's look at an example of a geometric series that converges. I could immediately tell in this example that my r value is negative 1 over 3. The absolute value of negative 1 over 3 is positive 1 over 3, which is between 0 and 1, which confirms that this series converges. As for calculating the infinite sum, we need to be very careful about our a value. Intuition might tell you that your a value is 6 because you're used to your a value being right in front of the r part. However, notice that the lower bound of this series is 2, and we're not used to that because we're used to seeing geometric series written out one of these two ways. This means that our a value is going to be something different from what we expect it to be. And to solve for it, all we need to do is substitute in the lower bound of our series into the expression and see what we get. As you could see, our true a value, in other words, our true first term of the series, is negative 2. I'll explain in more detail on the next slide how you're able to tell if the term right next to the r part is your a value or not. But for now, let's find the infinite sum. This series, because it's convergent, is equal to this simple formula. Our a value is negative 2, and our r value is negative 1 over 3. I substitute those values in, simplify my work, and what I get is that the infinite sum of this series is negative 3 over 2. Whenever you're trying to figure out if you need to calculate your a value, or if the a value has been given to you as the coefficient of the r part, what you have to do is first look at the lower limit of your series, and then look at your exponent. If the lower limit, aka your starting value for n, makes your exponent 0, then the coefficient is your a value. Let me illustrate that fact with an example. Here, the lower limit of the series is 1, and the exponent is n minus 1. If I substitute the starting n value into the exponent, notice that the exponent simplifies to 0. Anything raised to the power of 0 is just 1. So whenever your starting n value makes the exponent 0, basically what ends up happening is you get your coefficient multiplied by 1. But multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So that means that the coefficient for the r part is our a value, in this case negative 10. Now as for the other way around, if your starting n value does not make your exponent 0, then the a value needs to be calculated the same way that I calculated it on the previous slide. In this example, our starting n value is 0. Our exponent is n minus 2. Obviously, substituting n equals 0 is not going to make the exponent 0. So what we need to do is simplify that expression, and whatever the number is that we get afterwards, that is going to be our a value. Simplifying the expression gave me 24. So 24 is the true a value of this series. 